Pauline Isabel Licenteno. I'm a student nurse from BSN 2A. So today, I will demonstrate how to get the vital signs including the temperature, pulse rate, and respiratory rate of the patient. So the vital signs is very important because um, it gives us information um, about the physiological state of the patient, um, help us to detect um, in monitoring health problems and help us to visualize the current health status of the patient. So in this procedure, we need uh, five materials. So we need the digital thermometer, notepad and pen, antiseptic wipes or cotton balls with alcohol and then dry cotton balls. So, so before we start, we need to assess the patient by identifying the client and explain the procedure. So, Mom, are you Jesus Sarah Ikochesa? Yes. Okay. So, today I will get your vital signs including your temperature, pulse rate, and respiratory rate. Is that okay to you, Mom? Yes. Okay. For in identifying the patient, um, it help us to match the identity of the patient to get the proper procedure, treatment, and other interventions so we can ensure the safety of the patient. So, in explaining the procedure, it also lessens the anxiety feeling of the patient, um, reduce irritability, and then it helps us to gain their cooperation in doing the procedure. So, for planning, we need first to wash our hands, um, to avoid the transmission of microorganism that causes illness and diseases. So, the next for planning, we need to gather the materials needed so we can save time and effort and avoid distraction while doing the procedure. So, the next planning is we need to ensure or give privacy to the patient. Um, in giving privacy, we can close the door or close the window or curtains so, it shows us the respect to the patient. So, the, the, the last planning we need to do is to assist the patient in supine or sitting position if possible. So, the patient is in sitting position right now. So, the first implementation is the temperature reading. So, what is temperature reading? So, temperature... Um, mostly defined as, as degree Celsius of the body temperature. Um, we can get it um, through oral, um, rectal, and it through our tympanic membrane or you, um, getting the temperature within our ears and getting the temperature within our axilla, which we gonna do right now. So, the first thing we need to do is to take out the thermometer from out its pack and then you will now wipe the tip from the tip of the thermometer that will come in contact with the client so to the from to the area where you hold it so so this one so we disregard it and then another one so so with this, um, we help us eat a method of sanitizing the thermometer to avoid the contamination of germs and to have more accurate reading of the temperature. So, after cleaning the or sanitizing the thermometer, we, we will now turn it on. So, turn it on and then after that, we put it on the side and then we will pat dry the axilla of the patient so we will now pat dry we can use um we can use dry cotton balls or towels to pat dry the axilla of the patient why we need to pat dry the axilla of the patient because some axilla of the patient are sweating so we it can interfere the accurate reading of the temperature so so we will pat dry. They will contact. So 
So we set it aside and then we will now place the thermometer on the axil on the hollow axilla of the patient horizontally and then we will keep the patient arm across the chest. So with this procedure it help us the thermometer in place so it will not be fall down so after that we will now leave the thermometer until the sounds is heard on so we just wait until the sound is heard on so after that, we will now remove the thermometer and then read the temperature finding. So, we have the 36.2 degrees Celsius. So, after that, we will now turn off the thermometer and then we will now proceed to disinfecting the thermometer. So, again, using our cotton balls with alcohol, so we, can, we will now do it vice versa. So, we will start from the tip where we holding it to the area that will come in con that will came in contact with the client so ganyan. so next one is this one so after that we will now return it to the storage location so we we will not misplace the thermometer so in disinfecting the thermometer after use we can ensure the safety of the next patient that will use the thermometer to avoid um, contamination of germs and transmission of microorganisms so after um, putting the thermometer in the storage location we will now record it to our notepad so i will record it 36.2 degrees celsius the temperature of our patient so because it is very important to document our findings in objective data so because anything which are not documented is considered as undone. So after that, so we will now proceed to the pulse rate counting. So in pulse rate counting, um, it is also known as a heart rate. So we will now count the number of heartbeats per minute of the patient. So first, we need to um, assist the patient to a supine or sitting position while the arm is next to his body and the palm is facing downward. So, ayan. So, with this position, we can easily access the regional artery of the patient. So, we will now place our index, middle finger, and the ring finger so, to the regional artery. So, with this thumb, so we can feel it here. Ayan. So, after placing it, we will now press it gently so we can feel the regional artery. And then, we will put our thumb at the back of the patient crease. So, ayan. So, after this one, we will now um, apply um, enough pressure to the radial artery so we can distinctly feel the pulsating artery of the patient. So, just enough pressure so that the artery is not dilated. So, when you feel it, um, we will now use our wristwatch with the second hand to count the number of pulsation per minute. So, I will start.
of that. So, after counting the pulsation of the patient, um, we will now record into our notepad. So, I get about 68 heartbeats per minute of the patient. So, we will record it to our notepad. So, 68 is still within the norm normal range. So, after that, um, we will now proceed to the respiratory rate counting. So, in respiratory rate counting, we still need why we will still need our fingers fingertips is in the place so ayan so after this um while doing while our fingertips is in the place we we will observe the client's respiration so we can so the appropriate is we must do it secretly so the patient will not be um will not interview their respira their respiration so they will not be um too exaggerated so we we just get the normal breathing pattern of the patient so so after that so after observing the respiration of the patient we will now observe the rise and fall of the chest of the patient and consider as a one cycle so 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 after that, after observing it, we will now count the number of cycles per minute. So, after counting the breathing cycle of the patient per minute, so, we will now record it to our notepad. So, so I get 17 heartbeats per minute, respiratory breathing cycle per minute, so, 16, 17 is still within the normal range. So, we will now proceed for evaluation. So, for evaluation, we must evaluate the temperature, the pulse rate, respiratory rate of the client in relation to the baseline data and in relation to the normal range of the client. So, we can, um, we can ensure or we will know if the vital signs of the client is still within the normal range. So, after that, we will now document for documentation, we will now document the vital signs on the TPR sheet. So, we have the TPR sheet in relation to the hospital policy. So, always remember that we must document the it completely, concisely, and accurately, and with less bias for more accurate diagnosis. So, after that, we will note any observed abnorm abnormalities and unusual findings to the vital signs of the patient. So, as a nurse, we can immediately respond um, to the vital signs that which are not in the normal range. So, we can 
easily have an advanced intervention that we can we can use or we can apply to the patient to to get it back on its no normal range. So that's all. Thank you, Paul.